The sun shone down for nearly a week on the secret garden. The secret garden was what Mary called it when she was thinking of it. She liked the name, and she liked still more the feeling that when its beautiful old walls shut her in, no one knew where she was. It seemed almost like being shut out of the world in some fairy place. Chapter 10, page 89 Spring is currently pushing its way up through the ground, and the birds are happy outside as the sun becomes warmer. There's new energy hovering in the earth and in the buds forming on the trees. Today, I wanted to share one of my favourite classic novels, so I'll be reading and journaling from The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. The Secret Garden was originally published in 1911 as a story for children, although, of course, we don't need to be children to enjoy it. Pulling out my hoop and box of threads, I decided to create a design inspired by objects from the story. Mary's skipping rope, a flowering daffodil bulb, a little spade, and of course, a key. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the story, and don't worry, I shan't be giving many spoilers, the book begins with Mary. She's a neglected and disagreeable orphaned child who comes to live at her uncle's estate on the Yorkshire Moors. The house is large and lonely and full of empty rooms, unused and gathering dust. Mary is left to herself and she wanders alone through the grounds in the depth of winter when suddenly she comes across a key to an overgrown garden. This is the secret garden, one that has been locked up for ten years, filled with overgrown rambling rose bushes and encased by walls. As time goes on, the garden and the house unravel further secrets, and through helping the garden come back to life, and through gaining new friends, Mary finds herself changing as well. The threads weave in and out of my fabric. I think about how the colours will stand out from the beige background when the transfer paper is washed away. I love seeing a design come to life, little bit by little bit, one thread at a time. Picking the objects to include on the hoop was fun, and I thought about what would be instantly recognisable to anyone who's read the story. Mary's skipping rope plays an important part in the story as it's the first gift she receives from Martha and Martha's mother. The skipping rope is what takes her outdoors into the fresh and strengthening air. The key is of course for the garden and that which opens the door and the spade is what brings Dickon into Mary's world. The daffodil bulb is there for the spring that arrives halfway through the book, ushering in a new season in the garden and for the children caring for it. My copy of The Secret Garden is tattered and worn, the cover full of creases and the pages yellowed. This is a well-read and much-loved book. I can't remember how old I was when I first read it, probably not too dissimilar to Mary's age in the story. This is a story that's always stuck with me, the simplicity of the garden and the magic of spring so beautifully described. Mary's character arc is one perfectly laid out, her growth mirrored with the changing of the seasons. In many ways, the Secret Garden is not a complicated story, but it's one that's honest and thoughtfully told.
She did not know anything about gardening, but the grass seemed so thick in some of the places where the green points were pushing their way through that she thought they did not seem to have room enough to grow. She searched until she found a rather sharp piece of wood and knelt down and dug and weeded out the weeds and grass until she made nice little clear places around them. Now they look as if they can breathe, she said, after she had finished with the first ones. I am going to do ever so many more. I'll do all I can see. Chapter 9, page 81 It's so beautiful, she said, a little breathless with her speed. You never saw anything so beautiful. It has come. I thought it had come the other morning, but it was only coming. It is here now. It has come. The spring. Dickens says so. Chapter 19, page 197. To create the page in my journal, I picked four of my favourite quotes from the book to include, although in the end I only used three of them. I like to write down the first sentence as the way into any story is special. The words at the start of this book create a strong, if rather unflattering, image of Mary to begin the story with. As much of Mary's character growth takes her from being a disagreeable and sickly little girl into one who's healthy and happy, the focus on Mary's temperament at the start is, I think, important. It sets up her entire journey. Another quote I chose here was one where Mary is excitedly exclaiming the arrival of spring, 
It expresses a simple but deep joy in the changing of the seasons. One of my favourite aspects of the novel is the way that healing and growth are intertwined with caring for others. In many ways, Mary grows because she starts to take care of the garden and also begins to help Colin later on. She's able to let go of her disagreeable thoughts and repetitive habits by getting out of herself. She finds herself liking the people around her and wanting them to like her. Mary is not really at fault for the way she is at the beginning of the story. She's been neglected and spoiled. She's never before had to care for anything or anyone. While I haven't mentioned him much, as I don't want to give too much away for those of you who haven't read the book, Colin goes through a similar journey. However, his is due much more to fear than neglect. Colin is trapped by his fears, trapped in his room, lashing out at those around him, until Mary, Dickon, and the garden itself sets him free and he is able to grow. Dickon himself is almost an emblem of the healing power of nature, as he is in tune with not just the plants and the trees, but all of the animals that surround him. The book talks of magic. This is not the type of magic that is invented and used by a wizard, but the type that brings along spring each year and helps the children to grow strong out in the fresh air. It's the magic found in good food and loyal friendship. Perhaps that is my favourite part of the book. The magic woven into the story is the type that all of us can have and share. Thank you for joining me today. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. There are many others on the channel if you want to watch some more. Until next time.